Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overtracker magazine. Today I'm here to talk to you about the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard. What you want to know is what this motherboard has for you. Is it worth the asking price of I think just over $500 or 13,700 Rand here in, in South Africa? But before we talk further about pricing, let's just talk about the basics of this motherboard. So now, of course, this is based on the Z690 chipset that's matching with the 12th gen core series of CPUs. And with that, it means a lot of the features that you get on the board are courtesy of the Z690 chipset. So I'm gonna tell you about the ones that I'm mostly excited about that feature on this motherboard. And the number one that I literally think is going to be a game changer for a lot of people is just the sheer amount of M.2 sockets that you can have on the motherboard. So the hero, courtesy of the Hyper M.2 card, which I think you are familiar with because I've had it on previous high-end motherboards before, but this is the latest iteration. But anyway, so courtesy of this card, you are now able to add an additional two M.2 sockets to the entire system. So this card does support, I think in theory, a PCI Express 5.0 M.2 SSD, but if it did, it would only support one, not two. But when it comes to PCI Express 4.0 M.2 connectivity, it supports two, hence you end up with five in total because three are on the board and two via this riser card. So the M.2 sockets on the board, two of them are PCI Express 4.0 X4 and the other one is PCI Express 3.0 X4. I'm not sure why all of them are not PCI Express 4.0, but it probably has something to do with all the other features that are using up the PCI Express lanes on the chipset. More specifically, when we talk about what this motherboard is able to do, it is packed with a ton of connectivity methods. And I think a lot of them are taking advantage of this newfound connectivity options that you get on the chipset. For instance, if you look at the Ray IO, what you're looking at is 11 USB ports, two of which, or only two of which, are only, uh, two USB 2.0. The rest of them are USB 3 and upwards. In fact, there are three USB type C connectors on the rear IO, two of which are exclusively for Thunderbolt, I think, but there's nothing preventing you from plugging in your USB C device into them. But two of them are for Thunderbolts and the other one is just traditional USB type C. And of course you have the clear CMOS and you have the BIOS flashback button. So that's not new, but in terms of connectivity, it doesn't even end there. If you go to the front of the board, what the first things you'll actually notice is that Yes, there's the typical USB 3.0 headers. I think there's two of them in the USB 2.0 headers as well, that's fine. But you also get a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 type C header. And next to it, you also get a PCI Express six pin connector. So this six pin connector is able to provide up to 60 watts of power to the board, or rather to this uh, USB type C connector. And with that, Obviously, you can now use quick or fast charge. And I think it provides three amps of current to that connector. Yeah, I think it's three amps. I can't be sure, but I think it is three amps. In terms of audio, come on, you know the situation, right? They're using uh, a DAC. I think it's an ESS DAC. They've got the Nichigon fine gold capacitors, the, the Wimmer capacitors, and then you've also got the ALC 40. 4082 codec, I think. But on top of that, you also get a license for DTS Unbound. So you can layer all these fancy uh, head related transfer frequency audio algorithms on top of the robust hardware that this motherboard is actually providing for you. But talking more about the UEFI, which is what I actually care about, is that yes, visually, Asus has not upgraded this. I wish they would have and made it like a proper modern day UEFI, similar to what actually MSI or even ASRock are doing, right? But they didn't do that. But they did add a lot more features that are useful and I think that you will find value in as well. Of the most important of them all, or rather the most important of all these features is the memory overclocking profiles. I cannot tell you how important these are. For DDR4, they don't really mean much because we've had DDR4 for a while and I know a lot of you, including myself, are well versed in tuning DDR4 to some degree. But with DDR5 being as new as it is, few of us know how each of these ICs behave. And I think right now we have four major ICs that we, we're familiar with. I think it's the Spectec ones uh, and the Micron ones, if they're not the same, I'm not sure. And then we have the Hynix, ICs and then obviously we have the granddaddy of them all, the Samsung ICs, which 
even as early as right now are still the tightest timing ones with the highest frequency and obviously the ones that scale with uh, voltage so samsung does it again but anyway i tested this board with using uh, a set of kingston fury memory that's uh, using micron ic's and that memory kit comes in at 4800 but i was able to overclock it to 5200 while tightening the cas latency as well from 38 to 34 but we'll talk about that at a later point suffice to say the UEFI is where all the magic happens. These BIOS profiles, or these DRAM profiles rather, will make it significantly easier for you to get to grips with what you're supposed to do when it comes to DDR5. If you did not have these BIOS profiles made available for you, then you were going to struggle like I did because I remember powering on the system for the first time and just being presented with the DRAM, just the power options that pertain to the DRAM tuning. Goodness, I was just overwhelmed. I didn't know where to begin. In fact, the one of the things that will stump you the most is just the omission of DRAM voltage. That simply doesn't exist anymore. You at least need two voltages. I think it's VDD and VDDQ. So these two voltages are essentially replacing what used to be just DRAM voltage, where you would set 1.35, 1.4 and so forth. Now you're setting two voltages and depending on the IC that you have, some of them need you to set a higher VDDQ than VDD voltage, like with the micron ICs. And some of them need them to be in sync. Some of them need you to, to, to tune the system agent voltage. Some there's all a host of other things that are happening with DDR5 that many of us will not be familiar with. So having these BIOS profiles makes it so much easier because you simply copy what's there and then you tune accordingly. And just as, as a result of these profiles, my tuning abilities of DDR5 Whereas they went from zero, now they are, I can at least say they are basic, like basic, 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 but at least they are not zero. Whereas where I started, I was like, what am I looking at? So that's one of the things that I do appreciate once again about what ROG has done on this motherboard in terms of getting you up and running. So out of the UEFI, let's talk back about what is physically present on the motherboard. And that is the ability to use your old or rather existing coolers. So ROG has done it once again, where they allow you to use a different socket cooler with a new socket. As you all know, uh, Z690 brings with it LGA 1700, which is a longer CPU than what we had with the 11 5X CPUs, right? The 1200. What happens is that you essentially need a new mounting mechanisms, or in some instances, you just need a new cooler but the ROG boards have actually done away with that unnecessary cost or potentially unnecessary cost by allowing you to use your currently existing cooler with their motherboards. It's the little things that come together to make this whole Z690 experience more pleasurable than it otherwise would be. In as intimidating as it was dealing with the UEFI at first, I was able to lean on the profiles that are there and in terms of CPU overclocking as well, I was able to lean on the AI tuning overclocking that is there. So let's talk further about this AI tuning overclocking that exists. Now, using AI overclocking, yes, I didn't get the best performance I could. Manual overclocking got me there, but it was really close. I mean, the top, let's say, frequency bin for the CPU, according to the AI tuner, was 5.4 gigahertz. Manually, though, I was able to do 5.5 gigahertz. Yes. I would like, it would have been nice if it, it recognized that the CPU can do 5.5, but I think 100 megahertz here and there isn't really too much of an issue. On the e cores, strangely enough, it actually overshot what the e cores were capable of doing because it told me that they could do 4.1 gigahertz, whereas I found they could only do 4, uh, 4 gigahertz. So, as I was saying, getting back to the tuning, there's a setting in the BIOS that allows you to determine how SVID operates on the motherboard. So, you can get typical scenario, worst case scenario, Intel spec, and best case scenario, and auto, I think. So, using the AI tuning, I kept exactly the same settings but then i went to best case scenario which instantly lowered my power consumption and my temperatures but the performance was the same and on top of that then i just added 100 megahertz on the performance cores and i think 100 megahertz on or rather i said 4 gigahertz on the efficiency cores and with that i was still able to in combination right so the svid behavior from the ai tuning and my additional manual tuning I was able to get to 5.5 gigahertz on the two favorite cores 
5.1 gigahertz for all core frequency and 4 gigahertz for the e-cores as well and having done this i still managed to stay under the 241 watts pl2 limit that intel sets so that's pretty impressive if you think that you can add so much more performance but still stay under the power envelope that at least exists on paper for the cpus now you're doing this at the same time where the motherboard has the most beefed up vrm or power circuitry that's ever existed on any hero motherboard we're literally talking about 20 plus one phase power delivery system with 90 amp power stages even so i can come in and consume less power than ever before get greater performance than i ever did before but with that i have the most beefed up power delivered power delivery circuitry that's ever existed on the series before now that's a perfect combination if there ever was one so i'd like to talk to you about performance but i think that the best way to talk to you about the performance is actually in the benchmarks so i'm gonna let the benchmarks do the talking and then i'll talk to you about it afterwards You can see for yourself, the performance is staggering. Okay, obviously there are some situations that are GPU bound and you're not able to extract all the performance that, or rather show the performance gains that this 12th generation of CPUs brings with it. Because I mean, I'm using a 3070 Ti, right? I would love to say that, hey, I was using a 3090 to alleviate any sort of performance bottleneck that might be. But truth of the matter is, even if I was using a 3090, Many of you are not using a 3090, 
you know so most of you i would think are using probably something like a 3080 maybe 3070 ti or if not lower and you are going to run into cpu limitations much quicker with this platform than you would have with any other one when we talk about the synthetic performance though wow i think intel is just hit it out the park yes others will say that yeah but the 5950 is faster and all of that blah 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 look what i'm going to tell you is that for a 24 thread cpu to deliver performance like this is unheard of but we'll talk more about that sort of performance when i do the actual official review of the 12th gen core series of cpus with the matching magazine at the end of the month and actually prior to that as well we'll be looking at overclocking on the rog apex motherboard the z690 apex motherboard with dry ice and all of that good stuff but yeah let me know what you guys think of this motherboard are you interested in z690 are you excited for what it's bringing to us and yeah remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side so take care and peace